Hello everyone, it's good to see you back. Who here has given Fighting Lion a try as of lately? As the weapon has been recently buffed nice. to apply volatile rounds now, and this alone makes the already good grenade launcher even more OP. So what do you think happens when you use the buffed up Fighting Lion with Stasis Freeze and Shatter Build, with near infinite increased damage and frost armor by the bucket loot? You get today's build, which is off meta, but viable for certain in-game content. So starting with the general aim and the Zotic of the build, our aim is to showcase the newly buffed up Fighting Lion within a stasis focus kit and how to best support it onwards. For this we will be using Osiomantic Gloves and Fighting Lion. A start with Zotic Armor, Osiomantic Gloves, with his Zotic effect, Fervid Cold Snap, it states, Your Cold Snap grenades have an additional charge that recharges quicker on hits. The Seeker spawn from Cold Snap grenades travel further. Unlike the last time where we used the Zotic to create stasis turrets, this time around we'll be using our cold snap grenades like normal for the build. The reason behind this change is to mix things up, but mainly because combining its base effects with ice for their bolts will allow us to change these more enemies more often. This being further combined with durance and rending will allow easier control of dealing with multiple tough enemies at once, rather than struggling to take out a single minor enemy as we play. It also plays well within fighting lion being amazing up close or at medium ranges. Our second exotic is Fighting Lion, with this exotic effect, Delayed Gratification, which states, Grenade projectiles will bounce off of surfaces. Now, while this is lackluster, its actual main exotic effect actually comes from the Fin the Herd perk it has, which allows the weapon to do more damage against shielded enemies, apply volatile rounds on the targets, increase the reload speed on direct impact rounds, and rapid final blows will auto reload the weapon. So generally, it has a lot going for it, which makes it a pretty strong weapon to use within stasis. Now the volatile rounds effect is pretty powerful when using a stasis build, since us freezing multiple enemies and then using the following can create a crazy chain reaction in the process. On top of that, its damage is also going to be pretty good against bosses, since it will greatly benefit from whispers of rending, shatter, and our surge mods. Basically, while we have two primary weapons, this will be the main one we'll generally be using. For aspects of fragments, we have the following. A Glacier Harvest, where freezing targets create status shards around the frozen target. A Picking Up Shards will grant you Force Armor and Midi Energy. Ice Flare Bolts, where shattering a frozen target spawns Seekers that track and freeze targets. A Whispers of Durance, where your slow ability that you apply to targets is extended. Whispers of Torment, where you gain grenade energy from being damaged. Having Force Armor increases the amount of energy you get back further. A Whispers of Conduction, where nearby stasis shards track to you, and Whispers of Vending, where primary weapons do increased damage to stasis crystals and frozen enemies. So some of the stasis fragments we are using are already quite common in most builds we tend to see. Having Whispers of Durance and Conduction with Glacier Harvest will allow our build to produce a wide number of shards for us to collect and use for personal safety. Ice Flare Bolts, Whispers of Torment and Vending will play a different part in the build than normal, since this time we won't be relying on solely turrets to make our build oppressive while out in the field. With Fighting Lion, I have found that to make it feel more impactful, you will need to cause a chain reaction of freezing enemies one after another to make it more durable over time. Using our Frostbolt Grenade will not only freeze enemies, but it will freeze multiple in a short time frame upon use. Destroying them will produce more seekers that will freeze more enemies as we go along, which will also create shards and so forth. Now the interesting part of the build is where we can use this to be more risky with thanks to Frost Armor and Play. With this, Whispers of Torment and Vending in hand, you could do more indirect damage to targets while also getting a damage buff from frozen enemies, and also get grenade energy back from taking damage. This is a more reactive playstyle to fit into the Fin the Herd perk, where we can reload faster and also auto refill our weapon more consistently. If you're really good with leading your shots, GM level minor and major enemies should be fairly easy to take out in 1 to 2 shots with just a grenade launcher alone. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked with the highest priorities for the build. A strength is also being used with priority and will have further usage via status shards. Resilience, we have after a tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. I've got both Force Armor on full and Concussive Dampener mod for the 15% AoE damage reduction. I also recommend you add Cursor Dampener as well, since it will be very easy to get yourself killed via a grenade launcher on hand, and you want to reduce as much AoE damage as much as possible using this build. 
the discipline we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via cold snap grenades as cold snap grenades are required for the build and exotic to function you can't get around the standard cooldown too much however having whispers of torment in hand will allow us to reduce this common cooldown rate by an extra 7% to 12% depending on if you have the frost armor available mod wise we do have impact induction times 2 for a 17% cooldown via midi hits so this alone, along with Osimancy effect, should be enough to balance this key skill out. With grenade cooldowns covered, you can then invest into other areas as shown. So, momentum transfer for a 12% mini buff, and distribution times 1 for 3% all ability buff will cover the mini part of the build and generally everything you'll need. Additional mod we have the following. Avoid Siphon for creating auto power via matching elemental type. Heavy ammo finder, reserves and scavenger mod for a heavy weapon. Power Preservation, where using your super and getting kills will produce more orbs of power. Charged up for a plus one in armor charges. A stasis holster, where stone your weapons will automatically reload them. A void weapon surge for a 10% void weapon buff. And Powerful Attraction for automatically cutting orbs of power when using your class ability. As we have covered our exotic primary weapon, I would then advise you to pick some super weapons for the build. While I recommend they're all optional, so please keep this in mind. Our secondary primary is the Live Fire with Headstone and Blime Stealer. Now, before people come in and ask why I'm using double primary, it's because I need an anti barrier weapon. Plus, although FL is also a primary weapon, it can only get you so far in endgame related content. Now, using Live Fire with a given perks is ideal for the full stasis kit we are running with, since being able to get Frost Armor through weapon damage pairs well when combined with Whispers of Torment and Armor Ramis to use the mod. It's recommended you try and get the following because of the high viability and stasis build. But if you want something with a faster fire rate that can also get headstone, then the Jaraka 3 SR from Banshee is also a good start for beginners. For heavy, we have the Typhon GL5 with Chill Clip and Demolitionist and Spike Grenades. I won't go too much into this as you have covered this weapon quite a bit, but the following is perfect for the increased amount of damage you can apply once its perks and the Concussive Reload mod all become active. Now, if you prefer something more better overall, then try and get the VS Chill Inhibitor Grenade Launcher from the Vespers Host Dungeon like shown. If you can get the demo and BNS roll, you'll be set for life. It's quite interesting to see the leaps and bounds that Fighter Line has gone through over the years with Bungie's updates while also seeing it not become too popular as I would have expected it to be. While we do have a wide number of grenade launchers introduced that fit into a particular set of playstyles most players enjoy, a fighting line has been slept on, as it doesn't provide too much for endgame players to whatsoever you. Which is odd, as even before its update with Volatile Rounds, it was still an impactful weapon worth using against heavily shielded enemies, especially as of now. Which is why I'm hoping this build will push players to try out once more with how popular stasis and grenade launchers are this season alone. Now looking at the common build, attracting stasis abilities and freezing enemies will be the main aim of the build, which it does really really well. Being able to freeze numerous enemies will garner us shards, which will also grant us false armor and melee charge back upon collecting them. This is super useful not only for the buffs it provides, but instant satisfaction you'll be getting the moment you trigger everything with Fighting Lion in hand. With how easy it is to freeze things, it will make using Fighting Lion even more better and easier over time since you don't need to worry about being too accurate with it. On top of that, with the newly added update, a fighting line can now apply volatile round without the need of fragments to aid it. Now add on whispers of rending for the damage increase against frozen targets and concussive reload mod and you get a miniature nuke. Fun stuff. And while me playing a game might not do enough justice, I highly recommend you give fighting liar and stasis a try at least once as it's a perfect pairing through and through. And me using this in GM shows that it's possible to use this weapon in end game pretty flexibly and since it also has infinite ammo, you don't need to worry about special ammo mods. Honestly, I'm pretty chuffed this build and weapon hasn't picked up popularity just of yet. But maybe that's because not enough people have feel invicted to use it. Hopefully, this video will change that. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. While if you enjoyed the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and a sub while you're here. A dim link for the bill is located below in the pin section and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.